I received the new Intel 4900K, which is probably the most boring CPU in a long time. And today we will discuss why. Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will talk about Intel's 14th gen, which again split up the NDA into two parts. So today we cannot talk about performance data, but about the CPU specs. We can also show the 14900K and also the 14600K, which we have on the table. And then tomorrow we will have the full performance review. So first of all, we received this box from Intel with the CPUs inside, two of them, which was, even for Intel standards, not that spectacular, but it kind of fits the CPU. And that's why I also decided to have two videos. So today, more like a personal opinion rant about the 14th gen and some exterior details. Whereas tomorrow we will just purely focus on performance. So Raptor Lake Refresh already has it in its name that it's still Raptor Lake and it's just a small refresh, which we know is not going to be spectacular. It has positive and neg negative aspects to it. Let's start with one of the positive sides. So if you do some research, and thanks to my Discord, because I also was not sure about it, if you look back, it is quite rare that Intel supports more than two generation of CPUs on one socket and chipset in combination. And let's say you maybe adopted to this platform with a C690 and maybe bought a 12400 then you can still next year get a 14700K, 14900K or whatever and update your platform, which is quite unique. Because if you look back, typically Intel only supports two generations. And I had to check and only Socket 775 was a platform that supported more than two generations on desktop. There is X299 with this exemption where you had 7980XE, then the 9980XE, the 10980XE, so three generations of CPUs on one socket and chipset, but that was also not really desktop. It was high-end desktop, which is more like server. So yeah, this is pretty unique for Intel, which is positive, but then on the other side, they could have called this 3900KS square, 3950KS, 3950KX, I don't know, 3900KSX. Because if you already look up the information that has been out in the public already for weeks, then you know that the 3900KS and the 4900K are almost identical. At least on one website you can see that the game, all core game boost is like 100 megahertz difference. So yeah, we have a new generation, which is not really a new generation. And that also probably explains why you have three generations on one socket. Because originally, we also know that Intel, long time ago, was trying to get Meteor Lake as a 14th gen, or I assume as 14th gen. But then I think early this year, or was it already end of last year, we had the news that Meteor Lake will not make it to high-end desktop CPUs. Well, not high-end desktop platform, but, you know, desktop CPUs with high performance. And that's why, I guess, that's how we ended up here, talking about Raptor Lake Refresh. As I already said, we received this box with two CPUs, so the 14600K and the 14900K. And we already know, talking about the specs, that both CPUs are pretty much identical to the previous versions, like the 13600K or the 13900K. And then, we have the 14700K, which is the only CPU that actually is different to the 13700K because now the 14700K has more e-cores, which means that if you run high multi-threading loads, the CPU will perform better and it will also be more efficient because the e-cores are more efficient than the p-cores. So overall, if you look at uh, like power draw over the score, for example, then the 14700K will definitely be better than the 13700K. And then this CPU, which is the only CPU that is really different because it has a, at least a different amount of cores, is the only CPU you're not getting for a review. That is pretty obscure. I know that historically speaking, Intel always sampled like the i5 and i7 or like i5 and i9 or whatever. But yeah, that is definitely a missed opportunity, I think, because I mean, what else is there to test really? Now let's do a quick physical comparison of 13th and 14th gen. First look, nothing is different. Compare like probing points on the left side, on the top side, they look identical also on the right side. Also if you pay attention to those small SMDs on the bottom left side, like 
both right here and also the row on the total bottom, all of them are identical. So no difference when it comes to the top side physically between both generations. And again, the same thing for the back side, left 13th gen, right 14th gen. If you compare all the caps and tiny details on the bottom, pins and everything is fully the same, like no difference here. Quickly also comparison of the main components and height, like PCB height of 13th gen first, with about 1.14 millimeter full height of the CPU from bottom of the PCB to IHS height is about 4.38. 4.39, now switching to 13900K. I mean, we're not expecting any difference at all. So 1.15, it's the same. And total height, yeah, it's also the same. Within the tolerances, as expected. Now that we know that the 14900K and the 13900K don't differ at all, just judging from the outside, we also want to figure out if the 14900K is still affected by the bending caused by the stock Intel ILM. As you probably know, this problem has been around since the 12th gen, so the 12900K, and depending on your CPU and the mainboard and the cooler, you will be affected more or less by this. And if you use a CPU contact frame, you can typically battle the bending and improve your temperatures. To start with this, we first put our 14900K into the mainboard and then put both underneath the Kian's LMX measurement device. We typically use this machine for all kind of R&D work and also for quality check of water blocks or also the contact frames. First of all, the camera starts putting together all those single images into a nice overview so we can actually start defining where we want to measure. And then we proceed putting a dot matrix onto the surface which we want to measure. In total, we are going to have 63 measurement points. The LMX also allows optical measurement, but for our purpose, the laser is more suitable because it has a repeating precision of plus minus 0.6 micrometers and is therefore just extremely precise and perfect to measure any kind of deformation in surfaces. If we would use the optical measurement, it has lower accuracy with about two micrometers and it just takes a lot longer. And with the laser, we are done in a about two to three minutes. And here we have the result of our measurement and the result is the same typical deformation which we've already seen with other LGA 1700 CPUs such as the 12th or 13th generation. In detail our deformation from the lowest to the highest point is about 0.1 millimeter and all that would have to be filled up with thermal paste and that's not the main problem but the main problem is more that the hot part of the CPU which is in the center won't have proper contact with the cooler. To get a good comparison, we proceed now to mount a thermogristic contact frame again on the CPU and then repeat the entire measurement. Which means that first we will have to get our overview, the optical one of the entire field, and then we define again where we want to measure with the confocal laser. Now with the CPU contact frame, as you can see, we basically cut the bending in half. We only measure 46 micrometers from the highest to lowest point, whereas previously we had 92 micrometers. And if we put both images directly next to each other, it will be even more clear. And also you can see we did not only decrease the bending overall, but we also put the highest point of the CPU in the center, where you also have the hotspot and where you want your cooler to have contact to dissipate the heat. So in the end, all the changes is pretty much a number. We could have already taken a 13900KS, slightly adjust the thermal velocity boost, and then just run reviews already because nothing else changed. And not even the memory spec, because also that's something that was kind of leaked but and falsely reported in news like months ago that Intel allegedly adjusted the memory supported speed, which is still 5600 on the 14th gen that did not change. But I saw some news a while ago that it, I don't know, changed to like 6000 or 6400. That's not the case. It's still 5600. And for tomorrow, I also prepared benchmarks all within AMD and Intel memory spec and also in the more realistic scenario. So for AMD 5200, Intel 5600 for some benches and then a lot of benches with like 6000 for AMD and then 7200 for Intel, which is probably reflecting all kinds of scenarios. So you should get a good overview. Spend quite a lot of days on that. All right, it's pretty not exciting. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.